Hello, friends, and welcome to another video. Uh, so let's let's recap what we've been doing the last few days. So um, finite extensions. So the thing is, the thing is that you're working with fields, and when you have fields, you normally have vector spaces. Um, and when you, you have vector spaces, you have a ton of knowledge of linear algebra, which is, and yeah, it is the most important subject in math, let's say. Um, let me your opinion in the comments below. So whenever you have a field containing another, the bigger field is a vector space over the smaller field. Um, and, and that's the key idea. So for example, if we can find a basis, which is a finite set, uh, we say that the extension is finite. First, keep in mind, this doesn't mean that the, it's a finite set, that the complex numbers are a finite extension of the reals. And we've learned two key facts about finite extensions. One, which was quite easy, is that any finite extension is algebraic, meaning everything in it is, a, is an algebraic element. Everything has a minimal polynomial that is not just, everything is the root of something. Everything has a mu polynomial other than zero. Um, the other fact is that when you you take an extension, take up an extension, you add some algebraic things um, to a field, and then you add some more algebraic things. Um, the resulting the resulting thing is a finite extension, and and the dimension, which for fields we call the degree of the extension is the product of the degrees of the two extensions, um, the, the two extensions that you use as building blocks, which you've seen for finite groups, I'm pretty sure. Um, also, which we, for some reason, some mysterious reason, we write the same as, um, as the index of groups. Um, I mean, there is a reason, but no spoilers. Right, so uh, so one thing, so on Monday I talked about two examples and I proved one of the serious facts, um, serious unknown things that I know, which is that we know that out of pi plus C and pi times C, can't, they can't both be algebraic, but we nobody knows how to prove that either of them is algebraic, which is just hilarious. Um, so one thing that came up over and over is, it's just having, you know, applying uh, this theorem, but applying it more than once. Um, it seems like we should, um, it seems like something we should be able to do. So let's just uh, write it down what I'm talking about. So, So you have a field F um, and we have that F is extended by some other field, which is extended by some other field. And we have some uh, chain like this. Um, the thing is, if they're all finite extensions, let's say that f is at e zero. If all of these steps are, are finite dimensional, then um, the, the big extension is finite as well. And I can tell you what the degree is. It's the product of all the degrees of the of all these steps of length one. So keep multiplying until you get to <clears throat> e one e zero. Uh, of course, this has to be finite for every i. So this statement. It's just, um, 
it's just this one. But instead of having two steps, I have n. Of course, I can make the same with three and with four, but before before you do that, you go the easy way and you say n. Um, so the proof is very is very simple. Apply this to f e1 e2. Uh, this is a sequence of two finite extensions. So e2, the the whole extension is also finite. Um, the degree is the product. Uh, so that's the first step. And then what are you going to do? You then I know that this extension is finite. Look at the next. Uh, and again, I have that applying the exact same thing. which um, I guess now I can use the previous equation to decompose the last degree as e3, e2, degree of e2 over e1, the degree of e1 over f, and, and you keep going. <clears throat> you know what, I'm not gonna write it out. Um, So this is not the best way to write a proof. The best way to write this proof would be to say induct, uh, use induction on n. So I just proved it for n equals three. If you wanted to prove it for n plus, if you know it for n, you want to prove it for n plus one, do what I just did, but instead of, instead of two, write n. Instead of three, write n plus one. Then n plus one, n plus one. And you will have exactly what we want. Right, that was that was pretty easy. I think. I hope. <clears throat> uh, right. Let's prove another thing. Let's prove something. Um, prove something interesting. Um, something that is uh, completely non-trivial. So, say we have an extension. Actually, um, so we have a finite extension. Yes, we already we already already showed that every element every element is algebraic. But I can say something more. The degree of alpha over f. Um, so the degree meant the degree of the minimal polynomial. I should say degree of the minimal polynomial. And recall that we've already shown that the, this extension must be algebraic that alpha so everything is algebraic over the base field uh, so the degree of alpha over f divides the degree of the extension so for example if you if e was generated by something of the degree four you would, if anything, anything you can write, find in there has a degree one, two, or four. So this seems very non-trivial to me. Um, and still, 
uh, it's not, it's just we know enough to make the proof really easy. So look at the field, at the field generated by alpha inside of E. Uh, so E is a finite extension. So um, this, this means that it's a finite dimensional vector space over F. And how can you, um, so what can I say about F alpha? F alpha is just a subspace. Um, so it's also a finite extension. And also, E is also finite extension of F alpha because a basis of E is not going to uh, over, over F. So let me write it down. A basis of E over F alpha, oh, over, sorry, over F. So we know that there's a finite set here. Um, that uh, that is the basis. You take this basis and it, it must generate E over a bigger field because if everything is a linear combination of things in the basis with coefficients in F, it has to be a linear combination of the same stuff with coefficients in F alpha. I'm just allowing more things in the coefficients, and I don't even need them. Uh, so if you have a generating set of a vector space, how do you find a basis? Uh, you just take things away until, take things away, being careful that it, it keeps generating everything, and that you, and eventually you must make it linearly um, independent. Especially if you have a finite set, you know this must finish at some point. Um, so this is yeah, the test of your linear algebra. Okay, so you put anything inside of a finite extension, the ex both the, the extension that appears here and the extension that appears here must be finite. Um, and what we know is that the degree of the big extension is the product of the degree of the two extensions in the middle. So, uh, what is this? This is a natural number. It's a dimension of a vector space. Might be one. That's one is a natural number. <clears throat> it's not zero. It is not zero. Um, and this, this is the degree. Of alpha over f. Uh, we proved this because we showed that a basis of F join alpha over F, which is the powers of alpha until you get to the, the one that's exactly the degree of alpha. So uh, if alpha was root two, the base, the a basis of F alpha would be one root two. So two things, which is the degree of root two. If, if alpha was the cubic root of three, the basis would be all the powers until you hit the one that has a relation with the previous ones. Uh, the one that involves the minimal polynomial. Uh, and that's it, because I have here the number I'm interested in, the degree of alpha. And I'm saying that it divides this number. And I'm Pretty sure that it divides it because I just factored it and into the degree and then some number. So we're done.
So this to me seems super non-trivial. So for example, um, fourth root of five has degree four over Q. Um, this means that the degree of one plus two times the fourth root of five, just this number that is in this field, uh, well, the thing is, I, I've already talked about how you could just take powers until you find a relation, and you're guaranteed to find a relation of degree of most four, um, because this is the dimension of the vector space. So once you write five things, you, they're going to have to be linearly dependent. But um, because of what we just proved, it must divide. It must divide four. Um, so it's um, two or four. Um, it's not, uh, I mean, it's not one because it's, a rational, it's an irrational number. And if your minimal polynomial has to be one, that's just X minus a number. Uh, so it would have to be X minus this number. So it's just, to me, it's not clear at all in principle, if I just start taking powers, why there wouldn't be a relation between the first three powers? Um, and the thing is, if there is, there this must be must have degree two. So there must be a relation between just the thing and its square and one. And it's just, I mean, I know the reason, this is the reason, but it's just very interesting. Doesn't Doesn't seem clear that this would be like that. A priori at all. <clears throat> okay. So, um, so for example, you have things in a cubic field. There's no square root of any rational number, right? Let's see, so, so here's another example. Take the cubic root of two, which has degree three over the rationals. If if you take if you take a number and its square is rational, this would mean that alpha itself is rational. So are you gonna find you might wonder is is the square root of 17 in this field? It's not it can't be because the square root of 17 has degree two over the rationals, but um Let's prove it. If alpha squared, let's say it's B, it's a rational number, then the degree of alpha, well, you take X squared minus B, it's a, um, it's a multiple of the minimal polynomial. So the degree of, alpha over Q is the most two, but it must divide three. So the degree of alpha over Q is one. And this means that um, there's, there exists some polynomial in Q of degree one and alpha minus C is zero. So, Oh, did I just close the app? Oh, sweet. Um, oops. I'm getting it so old so fast. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm sure you could prove this um, in some straightforward way, but this is this is just so easy. There's no square root of a rational number in there, um, except you know square root of four and such. Uh, 
there's no new square roots in there because those are degree two and this field extension has degree three. And that's it. So powerful, it's incredible. Okay, uh, last thing I'm gonna say. Um, so this is, um, so an example of finite extensions. So the, the main example, is when you take a field and you add something algebraic. And that is, I mean, that covers a lot of them. Um, if you wanted another example that might not be of this form is if you, you go and add, instead of just one algebraic element, you add a bunch of them. Um, so the last thing I'm gonna prove is that every finite extension is of this form. So um, let's see, let E be, an extension of f. So I'm going to say three things are all going to be equivalent. So either they're all true or they're all false for any given e and f. Uh, so e is a finite extension of f. This is equivalent to um, to E being of this form is what I'm saying. There exists uh, some elements, some finite number of elements. Um, and they're all algebraic over F and E is obtain is is the smallest field containing all of them. And the last one um, is that the, the last equivalent thing is that uh, this is obtained by doing by doing this process where you just add one element, but you do this n many times. So you have F, you add alpha one, you add alpha one and alpha two. And until, until you're done. Um, and all extensions must be algebraic. Okay, that theorem took up half a page. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some regrets. Um, all right, so we're gonna show that any one of these implies all of them. So the way you show the three things are equivalent. I mean, you could show that one implies two, two implies one, two implies three, three implies two, one implies three, three implies one, but there's no need, right? Because if I know that one implies two and one implies three, that also tells me that one implies three. So that's true that one implies two. If E is a finite extension, so if I have one, um, by definition, uh, that means that it has a finite basis. of E over F. Uh, so this means that certainly E is the smallest field containing alpha one, uh, alpha N because E is a set of things of this form 
for some c's in the smaller field, right? The, the vector space is the set of linear combinations of stuff on in the basis. And this is this operation, this um, element is definitely obtained through doing field operations. The field allows me to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and I'm just adding and multiplying. So, so this shows um, this inclusion. And the other inclusion is even easier because um, E contains all of those elements. So it must contain the smallest field containing those elements. So to prove two, I need to show that there exists an alpha such that E is generated by those, but also that they're algebraic. Um, they're all algebraic because this is an algebraic extension. And we've already shown this. E, if E is finite over F, E is algebraic. And that just means that everything in it is algebraic over F. So we're done. We've, we're one third done. Uh, so let's now show that two implies three. Um, so if I have to, that just means that I have um, I have these alphas and they're all algebraic. Um, and if I if I want to prove three, I need to find the sequence of fields. I mean, there's the there's the I need this means finding the alphas. Um, so there, there are the alphas. I already have them. So. If I have alpha i as in two, then I can I can construct all of these extensions. Uh, so all I need to show is that they are all algebraic. So I need to show Um, alpha i is algebraic over the previous field. So the previous field in this sequence that I just wrote is the field where you add alpha one all the way to the previous one. And this might fit in these two lines um, by two. Alpha i is algebraic over f because I'm assuming that two is two. And two says that all the elements are algebraic, all the all these alphas are algebraic. So there is a polynomial with coefficients in f and f of alpha is zero, and this polynomial is not zero. And just notice that if I can, I can always make the coefficient field bigger. So there's just this polynomial is also a polynomial with coefficients in a bigger field and alpha vanishes there. Uh, and that makes alpha algebraic over a bigger field. So if you're algebraic over a smaller field, you're automatically algebraic over a larger field um, because you have a polynomial where, uh, that you're a root of. If you have a polynomial with real coefficients uh, with a certain root, then that same polynomial also works as a polynomial with complex coefficients and that certain root. Uh, so that's it. So I've shown that one implies two. I've shown that two implies three. So that also shows that one implies three. I don't need to say anything about that. Uh, so let's show that three implies one and then we'll be done. So if I have three, I have that there exists a sequence of fields and all, they're all algebraic. 
Uh, so if I have, so this extension is obtained by just adding one element. We already know that this is a finite extension. It just has a, because we, we showed it has a basis. It has a basis one alpha i, all the powers up to the degree uh, minus one. So this is a chain of finite extensions. Uh, and that's why we, and that a chain of finite extensions uh, gives me an, a finite extension at the end. That's what uh, the first thing I've shown today by induction. And that makes me that makes me done. All right. Uh, so Friday is a holiday, um, although next Saturday the tenth is not. So I'm, I don't know what world we live in anymore. Anyway, on on Monday I guess I'll talk about algebraic closure. No, no splitting fields. Splitting. What goes next? Algebraic closure. All right, goodbye, subscribe, something.